Hey y'all, it's Chris with Liber, and today I'm gonna to show you how to keg a cocktail. So everything you see here uh, is what you need. First up is this five gallon pony keg. So this is an old soda keg. You can get these at Homebrew Supply. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, the outside, usually pretty rough to use to keg. Um, what really matters is that it's clean inside. So um, you're gonna to wanna to rinse this out, sanitize it, make sure it's nice and clean and ready to go. Um, this particular model that we're going to work with today is a ball lock keg. It has two ball locks on top. One is going to pump CO2 into the contents of the tank. And the other one is the outline, uh, which is going to be how you serve this drink once this whole keg is ready to go. The other main piece of equipment you're going to need um, is CO2. So this is a five pound CO2 tank that's full and it's connected here to a um, a regulator that just allows us to read out the pressure. So when we open this thing up, we can see exactly how many uh, pounds of CO2 we're actually gonna be pushing into the keg. This line uh, is the CO2 line. So this quick disconnect, pull up and down, fits on to the ball lock mechanism. So these are just gonna attach and that's gonna allow us to push CO2 into the contents of the tank. And the last piece of equipment is the outline. So Exactly the same, quick disconnect, fits on the other ball lock. And this one comes with a little sort of ratchet style dispenser. A couple general principles of kegging, uh, whether that's beer, soda, or um, a really delicious gin and tonic. Uh, fundamentally what you're doing is putting gas into liquid. In this case, uh, we're forcing CO2 uh, into a mostly water-based solution. And there are a couple of general principles to be aware of. One is that the solubility of CO2 in liquid increases with lower temperature. So it's a little unintuitive. If you wanted to dissolve sugar in water, you want to do the opposite. You want to heat the water because solubility of solids is higher with uh, increasing temperature. We have the opposite situation here. We want really cold liquid contents because it's going to allow more CO2 to dissolve. But there's a second thing that you have to be aware of, which is that there's already some dissolved oxygen, just air in any liquid that you have. So we're going to force CO2 in, but we also have to pull out all that air. So after pressurizing CO2, we're going to repeatedly sort of degas and depressurize this keg to let the oxygen that's been expelled from the liquid contents, CO2 pushes out, we gotta let that evacuate so that more CO2 can come in. So it's kind of a dance. You're gonna push CO2 in, evacuate air, which is gonna allow you to push more CO2 in, evacuate more air, and eventually you're gonna end up with a cocktail that has no air dissolved in it, only CO2. We're kegging a gin and tonic today. It's a pretty easy cocktail. Just three ingredients, right? We need good quality London dry gin. Um, in this case, our premium tonic syrup. The water to make up the bulk of it. And we're going to use some ice here, which is going to do two things. It's going to further dilute the cocktail to the right ratio. It's also going to help get this liquid contents uh, very cold. So to start, um, you need to do a little bit of math. Uh, it's pretty easy, don't worry. We have a five gallon pony keg. So convert that to ounces, 640 ounces. And we want a drink that is two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce of our tonic syrup, and three ounces of water. When we carbonate all that, it's gonna be a perfect gin and tonic. It's gonna to be the right ratio. Um, it's gonna be ideal. So we have a 5.75 ounce drink and 640 ounces of um, available space. So if you do the math, it's about 111 full-size gin and tonics. So you can quickly figure out exactly how much gin and how much tonic you need. Um, you can either figure out how much water you need, but we're actually not gonna be that precise. We're gonna just know that once we have the right amount of gin and the right amount of tonic, everything else in this cocktail is water. And then after that, we can force carbonate with CO2. <sighs> Start with your cheap ingredients. If, if you mess this up halfway through, um, you don't really want to throw out like, you know, three or four bottles of gin and have to start over and maybe lose some during the spillage. Um, and secondly, this is a pretty big opening in these pony kegs, but Grab a big funnel if you have it. It just makes it cleaner and easier. And you're ready to go. So based on our math, we know that we need exactly 
five bottles of our 17 ounce premium tonic syrup. So we're just gonna add this straight into the keg. Next we need 6.75, yes, 6.75 liters of gin. So today we have a liter of beef eater, pick whichever gin you want really. We, we like London dries for gin and tonic, but this is your drink, so whatever you like. So we have this keg about half full of our tonic and our gin. The rest we know just needs to come up to level all the way full with water. But you'll notice here I have two pounds of ice. The point of this ice is to begin getting all of the liquid in the tank cold. We're going to add this ice in, finish it up with water. I don't even know how much water I have here. I just know there's more than I need to fill the tank. So let's go ahead and put ice straight into the, the keg. So with two pounds of ice in there, we're going to grab our funnel, fill it up with water. So we have a full gin and tonic sans carbonation in this five gallon keg. I'm going to bring in the CO2 canister, get this stuff out of the way. So this five pound CO2 canister has a uh, two ways to manipulate it. First off, the main valve uh, should be closed at all times when you're not using it. We're ready to use it, so we're going to open this fully. Once this is open, we can move over uh, to the secondary dial, which is going to regulate uh, the flow of CO2 um, through, the, through the valve and into the tank. You want to make sure this is open, so that is the off position. Um, we're going to drop this straight down in line with the hose and it'll be ready to go. So we're going to go ahead, put a lid on our pony keg. So these pony kegs um, are kind of oval, right? It's not a perfect circle, which matches the top. So what you want to do is kind of come in at an angle. You can't really go in like this. You gotta come in at an angle. And then once the gasket is below the level, rotate over, pull up. Okay, well, and while pulling up, you're gonna wanna push this like that. And once these feet are making connections here, it should lock into place. And if it's not locked, you'll know in a minute because it'll leak. Okay, so the keg's ready to go. First thing to do, is to take the CO2 in line and attach it to the ball lock mechanism. We've labeled this so we don't get confused. This one's CO2, that's the outline. So with the disconnect, the quick disconnect, pull it back, slide it on. You'll notice that little spurt because it's already putting CO2 in there. Um, just a kind of a residual amount, not a lot, but it's showing how when you pressurize the vessel with CO2, the seal for this lid gets stronger and stronger. So this is kind of an old school setup. This dial is manipulated uh, left and right to open and close. Um, ours is a little old and it's kind of stuck. It's hard to, hard to do with your fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, just a flathead screwdriver. So we've added only five pounds uh, of CO2. You've probably heard the tank over here. It's basically creating that seal, but you can hear it, CO2 is now going into the keg. What we wanna do is bring it up to about 50 PSI to start. So we've opened the CO2 canister up. We've got about 50 pounds of CO2 coming into the keg. Um, we need to help it get in there. We need to agitate the keg. It's gonna uh, help the solubility of the CO2. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and turn off the regulator and then come over here and roll the keg down on its side and just roll it back and forth to help that CO2 get into solution. You wanna do this probably 20 to 30 seconds 
And then when you're done, straighten it back up. And while the CO2 canister is still off, pull the pressure release valve on the keg. So on the top of these pony kegs, there's this little valve that you just pull up and it's gonna let all the air that was in the keg come out. Okay, right, so now it's stopped. And now we can open the CO2 and push some more in. So we're just cycling the air, evacuating all the oxygen and stuff that we don't want in the cocktail uh, and letting more CO2 come in to take its place. So we're gonna do a series of this where we carbonate, roll on the ground to agitate, stand up, depressurize, and then do it all over again. So I would recommend probably four or five times at least. Turn off the valve, depressurize. Turn the valve back on, slowly. Shake it again. Once you've done that five or six times, the keg should mostly be good. We're kind of doing the easy way right now because this keg is cold, but it's not ice cold. Uh, we could get more CO2 dissolved in the cocktail if this was really cold. So if that's your goal and if you have time, what we recommend is to put this thing in the fridge overnight, charged. So force in 50 pounds of CO2, disconnect, which is easy, and you can put this uh, in a fridge overnight. The next morning, come out, it should be ice cold, and then you can do it again. You can repressurize with CO2, roll it, evacuate, maybe do that two or three more times, and then you're basically gonna have full solubility, as much CO2 in your cocktail as possible. For the purposes of this video, at least today, uh, we're gonna call this good. This is gonna be probably 70, 75% carbonated, um, and that's good enough. If you wanna go all the way, do it overnight. So with your cocktail carbonated and ready to go, just need to walk through how to serve. This quick disconnect here is gonna go on the opposite ball lock. Keep the CO2 connected, uh, I'll tell you why in a second, but this is under a lot of pressure, so what we recommend is grabbing a catch just to start, because when you initially connect this piece, sometimes it forces itself out of the line uh, without you knowing. So um, just have this ready in case the pressure is a little bit high. Go ahead and connect the ball lock in the same way. Pull up, press down, make a good connection. So you can see some already pushed through the line. You can see some of the gin and tonic here. Um, now if we pull this back, <laughs> this is we're ready to serve. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to drop the CO2 level uh, down to about seven PSI for serving. Um, that's gonna be enough pressure uh, to keep this keg charged so that when you do pull the uh, opening tap here, product does come out, it's well carbonated. Um, and as you deplete this keg, you're gonna notice your CO2 dropping as well. So you're gonna periodically come over here and just make sure to maintain between five and 10 PSI on the CO2 regulator. So if you forget uh, during the party or wherever you are and you're going through the keg pretty fast and you realize you know, it's kind of barely coming out anymore, um, you know, you're just dribbling out, you probably aren't pushing enough CO2 from the line. Your regulator probably says you're around one or two PSI. You need to crank that up. You wanna be between five and 10 PSI for serving. Maybe five or six times throughout the volume of the keg you'll have to adjust the CO2, keep it between five and 10 PSI. So we're done, we did it. We carbonated a gin and tonic. I'm pretty thirsty, let's see how we did. Cheers guys, this is a on draft carbonated gin and tonic. It's quite delicious. <laughs>